What's up, everyone, and welcome to a new Tops and Bottoms. Tommy's not ready for it, but I am. This one's going to go up on YouTube. After weeks of me telling you to put it on YouTube, when I was entertaining, the one day where I'm like, oh, good, he never uploads these to YouTube. I can just sit here and play with my dolls and relax and just vegetate. He's like, guess what? I'm uploading them. I'm like, you're a fucking twat. <laughs> and on that note, it missed my introduction because it didn't start recording until your response. But this one's going on YouTube, guys. Welcome to a new Tops and Bottoms. <laughs> well, for those of you who are new here or joining us on YouTube for the first time, Tops and Bottoms is just me and Tommy Per going through some of the things that we found interesting, funny, bad, awful, weird throughout the world of professional wrestling this week and declaring them tops and bottoms. We're also going to declare shows tops and bottoms, and we're just going to make a lot of gay sex jokes. That's what happens here. Yeah, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, speaking of gay sex and jokes and uh, being cynical and negative, uh, my HIV test was today. It came back negative. Thank God. Uh, I, I That's the only test that I like to fail. Um, um. What about the COVID tests, sir? The COVID tests. Uh, well, I haven't had COVID or any symptoms and haven't had the need to get tested for that at all because I haven't been exposed to anyone, so that's really good. Um, but all, all the other tests will come back next week, which is uh, interesting for those of you who have not been tested in a while. Um, they At the Gay and Lesbian Center, just here's a cotton swab and stick this in your butt an inch in and swirl it around. Literally, that's what they said. And then stick this one in the back of your throat and make an M motion and swirl around. And that, I I was like, wow. And of course, because they need to test everything, you can't use any lube or anything to stick in that cotton swab up there. And yeah, it was, I almost gagged and I almost raped myself. And that was not fun. And that was wow and interesting. And I just kept laughing through the whole thing because I knew I'd bring it up in the intro today. But... And this is how you choose to start YouTube. <laughs> this is the story that you pick. The reason being, the reason being, uh, Pride season is just around the corner. So don't worry about your bikini bod. Worry about your your uh, physicality and your health. We want you around as long as possible. Make sure you know your status. Take your HIV wellness and your STI wellness as seriously as you do COVID. Wear your mask. Wear a condom. Go get tested. And um, even if you're HIV positive, you know, still be safe, you know? That was so much, Mr. Tommy Fur. That was so much that just happened in this what? intro to we our are professional wrestling show. Well, like, you might, well, not, hold on, not just say, I got my HIV test and let me and get tested, like a nice little PSA. No, we got the visual details of where the cotton swabs went. I honestly <laughs> think people should know about that. I honestly thought last time I got tested, it was pee in a cup, take some blood, be on your way. Now it's like, shove this in your butt, shove this in the back of your throat. I was like, okay. Let's well, start. that place is somewhere that takes money. And what you described sounds a little bit painful. So that starts us off into professional wrestling because put those things together and it's what is that me? No. <laughs> I was trying to make a hurt business pun and I'm trying to steer this back up to the conversation of professional wrestling. Oh, well, that's what you get. That's what you fucking get for springing it on me as you're re pressing record that this was going on YouTube after I told you to do it the last four episodes when I was prepared and entertaining. That's what you get. <laughs> well, let's talk some professional wrestling because that just made my entire day. That was wonderful. Um, so the Hurt Business has imploded on Monday Night Raw. We saw Bobby Lashley attack Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. And basically, her business is done. And I'm very sad about it. Are they done? Are they? That seems a little bit too quick and convenient and too tidy for WWE. Um, I don't know. Is show back up next week after they got, or this week, rather? No, I don't think her business is done. I think Shelton and Cedric are done being in the Hurt business. Um but that's oh, just, you think the hurt business is still open for operation, just I not those two. Yeah, I think hurt business. And also, there is the stipulation hurt business can't interfere in the Drew McIntyre Bobby Lashley match. But since they're not in the hurt business no more, 
Ah, oh, there's a little loophole, and we've seen stables and factions do this before oh, professional wrestling. So that's you know what? I'm down for that because that hasn't happened in a while. So I'm okay with that story. Mm. So you know, the whole thing about the hurt business and this whole Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre thing is I still don't believe, truly, truly don't believe that Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre are ready for a freaking fight. I just don't. Like, I'm not hyped up for this fight. Who is? <laughs> but then when you think about it like this, all the fanboys who hated Brock Lesnar, as soon as Lashley won the belt, have been clamoring, we want Lashley versus Lesnar. And, I'm, and I'm, I just don't understand why. Because... Everyone bitched when Lesnar was around. And now suddenly I mean, it's just because it's the internet wrestling community. Not gonna lie. Exactly. Hence why fans are fickle. Sh shut up. Just it's all scripted. It's all fake. Oh, and it's not fake. That we are stuntmen. It is scripted. The outcomes are predetermined. The moves do hurt sometimes. I mean, not here's the thing is the internet wrestling community, they know this. They they know this. I just I don't understand. I, I don't. <laughs> you lost your train I, of thought. <laughs> no, I don't really have a train of thought because I was going to try and like make some rationale behind just genuine human emotion and just living minute to minute rather than day to day. So you can't really do that. Just like you can't rationalize Shane McMahon walking out on Monday Night Raw and then presenting Braun Strowman's report card and saying, oh, he's a big dummy. What 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 did I watch? Clearly, what? someone is letting Paul Levesque and his uh, letting Paul Levesque's kids write storylines because that's the only thing I can imagine is a bunch of preteens or little children are writing these storylines. Shane's kids writing this storyline that seems like a very Shane McMahon thing to do. Then I need Aunt Stephanie to go over and slap the shit out of all three of those boys because <laughs> it's rough. I honestly feel like with with. Paul Levesque's genes that his daughters with with uh, Stephanie are are will probably inherit that brain trust that brain child. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Shane's kids. So. We'll go after someone's kids. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like I'm picturing in terms of who's writing these storylines, and all I can think of is it's I'm not insulting little kids. I'm oh, like, oh, I get you. I call yeah, that. it feels like little kids are writing this storyline. I was actually giving more credit to Triple H's daughters because they're his daughters, like they'll probably Actually, have better storylines than regular kids, you know what I'm saying? But they also will because daughters are smarter than sons because women are smarter than men. Sorry, it's true. It's just a thing. Um, but to talk so gay about- Gay men are 50-50. Gay men are, we're 50-50 because we got stupid straight boy mentality sometimes, but then we got empathic, empathic sympathetic female thought patterns sometimes. So we're 50-50 sometimes. So are you saying that you are sympathetic to this report card segment? No, I am not <laughs> sympathetic to this report card. You know, I will say this. I like it better than Reginald. <laughs> Ew, no, moving on. Let's move on and talk about probably my personal favorite thing from Monday Night Raw. And you're going to be like, Joey, I thought you were going to hate this, but... Hey, hey, hop, hop was one uh, of the. Are you fucking kidding me? I really thought you were gonna hate that shit. I can't help when some. Okay, so look at Monday Night Raw. Look at everything we watch on a weekly basis, and tell me that Hey, Hey, Hop, Hop isn't at least just a little original or a little something that we don't see every single week. I'll take it. Give me I that. I have more fun at my HIV test today than I did watching that segment. You mean with the cotton swab? That went you with the cotton it. swab. Forget the cotton uh, swab. Well, you... Hand me a whole paper towel roll at this point because no. that to me would be more fun than... I love The Miz. I love me The Miz. We've covered it over the last couple weeks. I love The Miz. I like Jomo. I've actually been trying to defend them as much as possible because I know this is not their fault. I just can't. I can't. And I won't. And I shan't. I shan't. I can't. And I won't. So we can move on. I like Hey Hey Hop Hop. You keep your cotton swab. I will keep cotton tail. And oh. moving on. God, let's... that was such, that was, that was painful, Joey. That was wonderful. That was painful. I disagree again. 
But you know what? I will agree that one thing on Raw was incredibly painful. And it was Rhea and Asuka's contract signing. Girl. Okay. So Rhea basically knocks Asuka out and then accepts a tag team match between them. And commentary goes, how can they coexist? It's like, I don't know. She just knocked her out. Why are you doing this? Who is right? Okay. You know what? Okay. So it can't be little kids writing the storyline because little kids even have the gumption and the intelligence to know that you hit me. I'm not going to play with you anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. So little kids aren't writing the storyline. So it, it's no little Lebex. It's no little McMahon's writing this, these storylines. It's got to be some idiot in his 50s or 60s. I have no idea what's going on. Like, honestly, what part of storytelling, period, says, oh, these two people that are going to be fighting each other are supposed to also like each other? Why is that? It's, I saw someone post this on social media, um, you know, the bane of existence, all social media. Um, I, that, I do love it. Huh? I do love my social media, though. I know. I wish we didn't need it for so much these days because I absolutely fucking hate it. It's good for porn. Um, not good for, like, anything else. Um, um, look, I saw someone post about uh, Sasha Banks and Bianca. And it was basically like they're trying to write a storyline of these are two wrestlers who want the best match possible and they have mutual respect for each other, but they don't know how to write that storyline without no. making one of them look awful, you know? Um, I think Asuka, Asuka's the Bianca in this situation where Asuka can do no wrong. I'm sorry. That's not me being biased because we're both Japanese. <laughs> what did Rhea Ripley do wrong, though? She's I mean, not the best promo, but like if they would have just put this match out and had both of these ladies go, we're intense, we're going to fight. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, Oscar though, like even even as a heel, she's kind of the same. Like no one's ready for Oscar, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it's great because that's just been her thing. No one's ready. It doesn't mean you're not good. It's like you're not ready to face me. Um, and Bianca yeah. going, you know, I am the EST. You know, I just feel like. Look, y'all wanted Rhea in this match. I warned you all, you especially, Joey, careful what you wish for. You got what you wanted, and this is not, this is exactly how I it's picture the match. Huh? It's not NXT. It's not I NXT. I knew I they were going to include her or ram her into this match, and now they're trying to make it work, and it's just not organically coming together. Um, it didn't work. That's the question. Like to go back, what didn't work? All they had to do was say, "I'm Rhea Ripley." In two weeks, I'm fighting you at WrestleMania, and I would have been sold. I would have been so okay with it. It's a it's a, a classic case of WWE or all of wrestling because the indies do it. Impact sometimes does it. AEW sometimes does it too. They expect you in some areas to already know what the fuck's going on, and they don't tell you what's going on so you're kind of like oh, i'm confused and then in instances where we already like know what to expect or what we want to happen they kind of spoon feed us shit to like it's paint by numbers it's flash cards it's like oh because I mean, yeah, we've seen this same storyline and we know where we saw it two weeks ago on smackdown same exact storyline so I will say this though, Rhea and Asuka don't make me want to slap them like Sasha Banks pretending to be Carmella. So, hmm. <laughs> well, um, you know what does make me just throw up some questions though? Baron Corbin ran out at the end of Monday Night Raw and helped the her business. And does the draft not mean anything anymore? Does do people just get to do that? What's happening? You know what? At this point. If they're working with such a limited roster, which I, I I don't understand why they would be, at this point, get rid of the brands. You don't have special general managers. Adam Pierce has been on both shows. Shane McMahon yeah. is now on Raw too. Just again, yo, consolidate the titles. Consolidate the titles. Merge the brands. Oh no, I don't think consolidate titles because they seem to not be able to write anything unless it revolves around a title point exact point blank example, whatever you want to call it being the women's tag team championships that are currently just in both main title pictures. <laughs> the, there was the women's title scene 
<clears throat> had so the good news about that was it had so many storylines where it could go. You had Wand and Bitchin, which is our name for uh, our Guns and Roses, as we call Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose. Um, I called them blonde, blonde Ambition. Joey thought I said Blonde Ambition. It stuck, and then he said Guns and Roses. So now we have three different names for Mandy and Dana, um, and their horrible Titan Tron entrance and their hor horrible. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you had Blonde Ambition. You had Day Glow, which was uh, Lana and uh, Naomi, um, Dakota Kai and Raquel, uh, uh, who, 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 Riot Squad. Right. Now, uh, now you have like the 19, 1900th reincarnation of Natalia and Tamina. And it's like, they're all like trying to be cohesive as a tag team and they're all actually kind of working well. And yet Shania Payne is still somehow feuding with each other and feuding yeah. with the main title holders and have Reginald. It's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. But then if you're just going to have all these people that can do whatever they want, like Baron Corbin showing up on another brand, does any of this really mean anything at this point? Like, it's it's kind of like the lead up to Survivor Series. You're like, it's it's Mania season. Go with it. I hate no. it. I hate no. I hate, I, hate it. It. I hate it. I I think it's dumb. Okay, well let's cool off from talking about WWE storylines because, hey, everyone needs a little bit of a pause before we go into more WWE. Let's look at what happened on AEW this week, starting with the um, in ring debut of Christian Cage in AEW. So. You get to see him go up against Frankie Kazarian in a really good match. Yeah, timing seemed a bit off in some places, but I mean, hello, uh, it's Christian. He wrestles 10 times better than me. So it's kind of like, it was so amazing. I was just like, he's still got it. Yeah. Christian's always been a great worker. Um, Frankie Kazarian's always been, was one of my favorites when he was in the OG TNA. Um, uh, wait, yeah, I'm sorry. I was I was getting confused over with someone else for a second. But yeah, uh, Frankie Kazarian's always been really good. So, I mean... I got nothing really bad to say. I no, mean, I mean turn out. do you feel like Christian is going places? Because he's there, but in AEW, we tend to see people just kind of show up, have a match, show up, have a match, and then three months later go, I had these matches in these months that just passed. Can I have a title match now? I, like, have a, I have a punch card. Uh, it's, you know four matches and then my fifth gets a title. Can I like, you know, um, uh, <laughs> on the third you get a sub. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's valid for everyone except for, you know, Hikaru Shida who can't even get a match as women's champion. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't want to, I don't want to make any snap judgments right now about Christian mainly because it is AEW and it's mania, it's mania week and they know. So it's like, I don't think they're really going to invest a whole lot in building huge storylines right now because a lot of people for better or for worse will be focused on mania week which i think is smart i mean it's good but i mean here's the thing is i'm looking for something where they're going to want to rival this whole mania week because wednesday is really the thing where nothing's you know what are they going to do next wednesday when it's takeover this wednesday you know what i mean like i'm looking for something really big to be like hey we're still aew we're still yeah alive. I mean, no, that that's completely valid, and that completely makes sense. But uh, I don't know. It's just I'm just get, I'm giving them a break because it's it's Mania Week, just like I would kind of give WWE a break if uh, you know the week of All or Nothing or Double or Nothing. Sorry, or you know what I'm I, saying? It's kind of like WWE did come to play this week because we'll talk about this main event in just a second. But let's go ahead and move on to the match between QT Marshall and Cody because it was. Best friend versus best friend, very WWE women's division. Um, but at the very end, it was DQ because all the Nightmare Factory kids came out and attacked Cody. And, you know, I don't hate the idea of this, but Cody Rhodes gets... No one sticks around with Cody Rhodes. Everyone betrays Cody Rhodes. He kind of books himself as the martyr. Kind of, but he's just kind of like the only person at this juncture that hasn't turned on Cody Rhodes is Arn Anderson. And Brandy. I'm waiting for the Brandy turn. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Honestly, I'd be so for it if they I went really through. 
Could you imagine those two? Because we know Brandy can give some attitude and Brandy can act. So if they did a whole divorce angle. Oh, I'm team Brandy. Mm -hmm. Who oh, told team you Brandy. Open, night, open mic night, bitch. <laughs> so we're team Brandy in that scenario. For this match, were you team Cody or team QT? Neither. Oh. <laughs> I'm team for Karo Shida getting a match <laughs> in a story. Yes, she, did. she did in this I, um, week. It was a tag team match where she teamed up with, ooh, why am I blanking? Because there's a lot this week. There was a lot this week. I, we weren't going to talk about it, but she did have a tag team match. She teamed up with Ty Conti, and they took on Nyla Rose. I love, I love how you emphasize the name so you don't, butcher it it's <laughs> I got to actually that's just how excited i am when i say her name i have to kind of toss it in the air but like take on tea <laughs> um and versus the bunny and nyla rose which brit baker <laughs> like, we love Britt baker it why have i not gotten Britt Baker versus Hikaru Shida. Yet, what is wrong? Why are you not doing this? Pretty much what I have written down. So, uh, back to the original topic at hand Cody and QT. I can't even talk about that now. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I was, I, here's my thing about Cody and QT before we move on from there. Like, just like WWE seem, seems to be unable to write a storyline that doesn't involve the title or, like, two best friends going at it, it almost feels like AEW has the same problem with factions. I know we love factions, and this is a little overboard. You know, I like chocolate, but sometimes, can I get some strawberry or vanilla or, you know? Yep. It's just like, guys, like, because then you fall into the same trope of, oh, they're a faction. Now they're feuding. Now they're broken up. Now there's little itty bitty mini factions. I'm just kind of like, uh, I don't care. Yeah. Well, speaking of teams and factions that were having feuds, that was the main event. So let's talk about it because it was great. Um, so it was Orange Cassidy teaming up with Chuck to take on Kip Sabian and Miro, of course, with Penelope Ford in an arcade anarchy match, which I was very skeptical going into. I'm not going to lie because some of these names, I'm just like, what the hell is this? It was like when on SmackDown, we'll talk about it. It was a Nigerian drum match that, um, I don't know. I that's don't know. A thing. I know. Yeah. I know, but I don't know what it is. I did. Well, years, we I did years of text based RPG e fetting. I have no fucking, I, when they're like arcade mayhem, anarchy, whatever match, I was like, Oh, God. Oh, okay. Which one of my old E-Fed buddies is writing for AEW? Who did this? <laughs> Figure out who did it and shake their hand because was, this I, was fun. I was this, entertained, yes. But we saw Sue drive in in her minivan, drop <laughs> off Trent, which was... I love how over Sue is, just in general. It makes me very happy. It makes me and so it, happy, actually. But this match was just pure and utter chaos. It saw the return of Chris Statlander. She attacked Penelope Ford. And so many hard hits, so many busted arcade machines. I And the Legos. The Legos. Yeah, but we're from the indies. Legos, duh. Legos are a little bit tired. That was the only thing where I was kind of like, we could have done something different there. Like, I disagree. I think they were perfect for the, it's an arcade match it's a game based match like, listen i have been in plenty of arcades some adults some not um <laughs> <laughs> hence why you should know your status no I'm, that was a total joke uh but like i i've never seen legos at like an actual video game arcade you know what would have been cool a skee ball machine being used, I would have laughed my ass off about it. Right? Like someone gets thrown on there and you just whip the balls at them and they're groin. Come on, Joey, let's get on it. I know an arcade okay. in town. <laughs> get on it. Let's film this match because honestly, this was fun. This I know. Was if that's my main complaint, is like, oh, Legos have been done so much on the indies. And that's a good 
that and I didn't hate it. I just said, oh, we could have done something better, guys. You know, but it was I was entertained. So I'm so happy with it. And you know what I like about this match? is I'm hoping, because AEW is really good about this, is they have the big match, and then the teams go their separate ways. They don't fight again. It's great. So I'm hoping this is the end. We finally get to see this whole Miro, Chuck thing, done, no more. Um, So I'm very excited about that, too, because it was starting to wear a little bit tired. So this giant, amazing main event was just perfection, and I hope it ends at that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and move it was on. Ten times better than the wedding. Ten times better than the wedding. That. And that's that. why we were skeptical. Joey's an AEW fan. I'm. I can respect stuff that I like about AEW that they do right in my eyes. Uh, I, I'm. I'm a lifelong WWE guy. Uh, so I, I have to watch it because it's part of my job, thanks to Joey. Uh, but I. That's why I was skeptical. I was like, that wedding was so not fun. That I was kind of like, please don't, oh, please don't fuck this up. You know, like, yeah. yeah. So I'm glad they they hit it out of the park. It's better than the wedding being really good and that this being the blow off would suck. I'd rather have the blow off be really good. You are correct. Yes. You are very correct. Well, let's go ahead and move on to NXT because a few more things to talk about. And as always, if you guys want to hear us talk about more things, pay us. So let's move on to NXT <laughs> <laughs> because it kicked off with a really interesting story to me. It was Cameron Grimes versus Roderick Strong, and we've seen Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole really build into this feud that's just monumental because they even made a contract signing fantastic. So yeah. it's really left Roderick Strong out in the nowhere. Like, he's not doing anything. Uh, I feel like this has happened before. I just can't remember with which wrestlers. He's definitely the middleman in this feud. Uh, yeah. It's just right, kind he's not of even like, in it, to be honest. They have not put Roderick well, Strong at the forefront well, at all. Cole turned heel on Str- Strong as well. Um, I feel like Roddy would have had a bigger role in this feud. And honestly, I I think he'll play a bigger role in this further down the line. You just you don't want to throw everything in into the first big outing, you know. I mean, um, I guess so. I'm happy he's not being too involved because it's honestly made this takeover match a little bit better. Uh, but you know what made him a little bit better is him being a little bit disheveled and a little bit in his head as he faces to the moon. <laughs> I just honestly think that Roddy, who was always my favorite in the Undisputed Era, mm-hmm. I think oh, he Roddy, was. yeah, I, I, because yeah. I, I. I liked his stuff on the indie scene. He's wrestled out here in Vegas uh, a couple times as well. Yeah, and from the indies too, he just, well, I think he's great. You're a fantastic worker. If you ever watch this show, which you're not going to, because he will. Uh, um, yeah, no, it'll be on YouTube. Like look at these two homos talked about us. Um, but you never know who's going to watch or whatever. Uh, we're not egotistical. We're just prepared in case someone goes, what the fuck did you mean by that comment? Um, prep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. you're like, do you want to talk to someone about getting on prep? I go, can you just test me already? Thank you. Um, let's see here. I like Roddy. I think he would have had a bigger role if Bobby Fish weren't injured right now. Yeah, agreed. They would I have him pick sides. I could, yeah, they would have him pick sides. And I think Bobby Fish probably would have been on more on the Kyle O'Reilly side, and Roddy would have been on Cole's side, and then they would have oh. eventually worked into Cole versus Roddy later on. I draw comparisons between Adam Cole and Roderick Strong and Gargano and Austin Theory consistently. Like, I think they're very much kind of the same dynamic. Yeah. Well, except, except Roddy looks too smart to play himbo. I mean, yeah, well, he's a dad. That's the reason. He's a dad, <laughs> dad. Um, but this match, though, I just got to say, both of these two – because, honestly, I love Roderick. He's just not one of the more charismatic people on the roster. And you know what? He held his own against somebody who's a veritable, um, I don't know, what would he even call himself? Coot full of chickens of charisma, like uh, Cameron Grimes. I don't know. But, so, I think he really held his own. It was very interesting. But not much more to talk on on that because there's a lot to talk about with this next little segment because we saw a little Pomeranian walking around at NXT 
And it's got to be Ty of Valkyrie. Come on. I, I, I'm so excited. I want Ty to come back. About fucking time. About fucking time. Yes. And a little tidbit of information. I do believe it was Miss Zoe Stark who won the Future Stars of Wrestling Women's Championship from Taya Valkyrie. Oh. So I'm pretty sure it's who oh. she won it from. And um, yeah. And uh, so that'll be interesting when they cross paths in NXT because they already have a little bit of history. So that'll be I fun. Just, I just want her to be it her. It took her get here. Jesus. But just bring me that prima donna attitude. Who the hell is Io Shirai? Never heard of her. We're going to have a match, and I'm taking your belt. That's the tie of Valkyrie that I want. It's the tie of Valkyrie that I need. Uh, rejoice, everyone. He rose again yesterday. And today we're talking about she has risen in the resurrection of the Divas era. <laughs> I cannot wait for her to Pomeranian as women's champion, but let's go ahead and move on to the tag team division because we did get um, a little bit of a prelude to take over. I didn't want to talk about this match, but I'm going to throw it out. Um, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell are going to be taking on Shotzi and Ember for the tag team championships at TakeOver. Should be a good match, but the tag team match I want to talk about is Casey Cantanzaro and Caden Carter versus Mei Ying and Xia Li, because this was, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. What else can you say? Xia Li is one of our favorites over here. Um, mm -hmm. Come a long way since her days of being generic Street Fighter character number four. Um, has come a long way and so glad for it too. And Casey's come into her own too. She went from mm -hmm. being just like the Ninja Warrior chick to, you know, Mm -hmm. To being like an actual like character, I I don't I think her levels. What? She has levels. She's not just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. just waving. No, guys, I'm not. I'm not Brooke Tessmacher. Um, because that's who she reminds me of a little bit in the face. Oop. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no, not a not a not a bad thing at all. I think Brooke Brooke Tessmacher is beautiful, but she just she does look like her like. No, I'm not Brooke yeah, Tessmacher. She does. she does. I think she does in the face a little bit. Never drew that comparison before, but she does. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like every blonde after Tori Wilson was like, no, I'm not Tori Wilson. <laughs> Wave to the crowd. <laughs> but this match, can we talk about that smoke spot? So what happened was Caden Carter walks up, gets in Mei Ying's face, who's never left the throne in this match at all. And she just grabs her by the throat breathes the smoke into her face and she passes out. And I'm like, <laughs> And you know, every fucking guy who vapes on the fucking indie scene is going to start using that, that move now. You Ew. Know that move? Yeah. No. Yeah. We're about to smell like tutti fruity, orange taffy, juicy fruit flavored fucking vape smoke when we wrestle now. I wonder how long, I wonder if that was taped, like, pre-cut in or if she had to like somehow hold that in the whole like until the spot the camera wasn't on her the whole time boa can slip her something she's fine but <laughs> legit i just this is being built so correctly and so organically over time because they gave us that whole premise of who mei ying is and her backstory and then from that we then got to see how that character is now behaving in everyday life today. And it's just been so patiently written. I enjoy it. This is good. It's kind of like what they should have done with Sister Abigail. Ooh, yeah. And, and But instead, like, we don't even know if Sister Abigail's real or if she's just, like, you know, like a mythic creature no. that everybody believes Hold in. Hold on. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to stop it because I've been doing ring the bell now for two, um, maybe going on three years. I don't know. Time is relative, but whenever anything happens around Bray Wyatt, I get hundreds of women's wrestling fans. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> Inboxing me. <laughs> Sister Abigail, this sister Abigail, that 
We really? think Nikki Cross should play Sister Abigail. What uh, if Rhea Ripley's Sister Abigail? Mia Yim. Sister Abigail. No, this character is done. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> but that's what I'm no saying. More. I'm that's what I'm saying is that uh, you know, they've been doing it correctly in NXT. Whereas WWE should have pulled the trigger in year one or year two of Bray Wyatt's character to do Sister Abigail. I think the boat, if they ever did Sister Abigail like this, what they're doing with Zia Lee, and you know, um, that yeah. it, it's it's it, no, it's no one, no one's gonna care, you know. I just so can imagine funny. like if they did introduce Sister Abigail, she either a be released by now or b be I'm Sissy Abby in the Firefly Funhouse. I'm done. Yep. <laughs> I'm done. You know it's true. No, well, if you're probably, done, let's go ahead. They'll probably do that. Watch, they sign Britt Baker. They sign Britt Baker, who gets fed up that she doesn't have an AEW Women's title, and then they make her sister. <laughs> no, not today. No. Not today, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to what happened after the main event. So the main event happened. We don't need to care about that. Who cares about what happened? Because Io Shirai storms out to the ring, snatches a microphone, calls out Raquel Gonzalez, and a whole brawl breaks out to end NXT. And you know what? I have not seen anything like that from the women's division on any show, any program that's existed where a woman takes center stage after a men's main event and makes it about them. Like, I was like, this is the women's revolution that they keep talking about on the main roster. It's like, this is it right here on NXT. Well, I think the closest that we... I'm, I'm sure something happened with Becky and Charlotte and Ronda and that whole buildup. Um, but even before then, the only one that I can remember where they did that after a men's main event match... Mm -hmm. Was Sable Luna confrontation in '98 in the build up to WrestleMania? Okay, and that was that was a huge pull apart too. All the men came in to pull Sable and Luna right. apart, and then and that's the only thing I can remember after a men's main event match is them doing. So it's been like what twenty two some odd years since. It's I don't know, but I was literally just yelling at my TV because I was like, "This is fun!" Like it's just it fun. fun. Raquel's taking that belt. Raquel should take that belt. And then EO desperately needs to come to the main roster to help the main roster because they but need... Will she do anything? I think so. I, after WrestleMania is always the huge reset. <clears throat> I said this with Fastlane. We would get more of a push towards WrestleMania after Fastlane. The big mistake they made was adding another pay-per-view after Elimination Chamber. Was it Elimination Chamber? Yeah. After Elimination Chamber, adding another pay-per-view made no fucking sense. Um, it just it just muddied the waters. Um, guaranteed, after Mania, they're going to probably do another draft or a superstar shakeup. Oh, so. More streamlined. So I have faith that Io Shirai will get the call up and then she will do something. I don't have faith anymore. The fact that they were able to so quickly ruin Rhea Ripley versus Asuka with a week of storytelling, I don't have the faith anymore. The faith is gone. George Michael told me to have the faith, and I will not. It's... No. Call all of my faith, at the end of the day, my at faith the is day, broken. At the end of the day, Joseph, mm -hmm. it is... Uh, it, and don't make me use your shoot full name, bitch. Um, yeah, I will do it. I will do it. If you guys want to know Joey Mayberry's shoot full name. No, don't do that for legal purposes. $10. <laughs> I will tell you his full name. Uh, so anyways, <clears throat> um, look, it's like two weeks, two weeks of bad writing. It's not ruining Rhea's career. It's not ruining the match because... Asuka versus Rhea will save whatever bad writing that they've done in the buildup. The match will be good. And then every, after Mania, it's a clean slate. You know what I'm saying? Wrestling fans are fickle. They forget. They forget a lot of shit. Yeah, they so just put on a good match and don't have a shitty ring explosion and you'll be okay. Shade. <laughs> <laughs> 
because as we've learned, it's always the end, the very end that people remember. So just, you know. Just ease on into it. Ease, ease on into it. First. Just an inch with the cotton swab, guys. An inch with the cotton swab. <laughs> Well, on that note, let's the go ahead. The Lesbian Center owes me money for all the promotion I'm doing in this video. I'm just yes, saying. So. You deserve to get paid. <laughs> just like they finally deserve to give Edge another pay bump because he finally walked out on SmackDown this week and said, I am the rated R superstar. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. I've and been waiting. I was weird. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. He dyed his beard. He did dye his beard. And you know what? I'm all for it because he doesn't look as bad as his new action figure that's come out. <laughs> did you see that thing? Guys, just save your money and get the ultimate edition one, which looks amazing. I saw it at Target today on the <laughs> rack, and it literally <laughs> looks like they took his face and pushed it up. Like, mm. like that. So... Thank goodness he walked out on SmackDown and looked badass. This is, like I said last week, this is the edge I've been waiting for. So, yeah, we'll get to more about that. But let's go ahead and talk, because we talked a bit about the women's tag team division. Let's talk about this horrible segment that happened, which I say segment because it was Natalia versus Shayna Baszler. And Natalia beat Shayna Baszler in about 35 seconds via a small package. And then, for no reason, uh, well, I guess it, there was a reason, a reason. We well, see Nia Jax then come on the attack, attack Natalia and Tamina. Then the Riot Squad just poofed out of nowhere and appeared. I don't know where they ran from, but they just appeared in the ring, started fighting. Then we got, um, who's another tag team that ran out? Um, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke ran out from Monday Night Raw. Lana and Naomi ran out from Monday Night Raw. And then we had a big brawl where everyone was attacking everyone. There was no, like, faces that stood tall together or heels that stood tall together. Everyone attacked everyone else. I, I called this weeks ago. I fucking called it. We're going to get a multi-women tag team match because they were yeah. building so many of these tag teams. But, like, why are we doing it like this? Like, always they've always done it like this though have they because faces were hitting faces heels were attacking heels there's no which reason I, for it but they were running out to save another team or anything no so, well, i'm glad i'm glad you want to know why because if it was faces versus heels then it would be like oh god are we getting a multi-woman tag match where it's like six on six which i am not a, i hate i hate anything that goes beyond the traditional survivor series tag matches um, I don't I, that should happen though. I don't. I don't think it should be a multi-woman tag team match. No, I, I think it's like a gauntlet match. I really think it's going to be a tag team gauntlet match, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with that, but at least let these teams have interactions that stem from their relationships with each other. You know what I mean? Like, there's no reason that Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke don't like Lana and Naomi. There's not a reason for that. So, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Because if you think about it, you got to think about it. You're not remembering all of the episodes where we're like, what the fuck? How come these people are getting a shot before this tag team? They've been building Lana and Naomi. Why is it they were just building Dana and Mandy? Th but that's so, not what they said on television. That is your personal fan fiction, Mr. Tommy. My Bro. personal fan fiction? No, no. Because watching this, it's like, what the, we both have said, like, what the fuck's going on? They were just pushing this team last week. All these teams have been having interaction with Shania Payne, except for I think Riot Squad is the only one that's kind of been like not really interacting with the tag champs. Their whole storyline revolved around being yeah. paired with Billy. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like each team in their own right thinks that they deserve the next shot at the belt. And they think they deserve the title. Um, this is one of those things where we don't need things spoon fed to us. We can kind of just piece two and two together. The only team that I think does not really belong in this because they've been together for all of two seconds is the 19th, 1900th reincarnation of Tamina and Natalia. Like, I like not Tamina. I think <laughs> they're a great team. 
They and are this incarnation, you know, 19. I want spoon feeding. Give me spoon feeding. You, you, you are, you, you can definitely tell that your mother suckled you too long. Um, <laughs> no, I took formula because I was allergic to breast milk. Perfect homosexual. Now, <laughs> no, that's going to be, a, that's going to be a fun trivia question on our one year anniversary of the show. Um, but, <laughs> but, um. Yeah, I 1900th time is the charm for Tamina and Natalia because they are actually meshing well, which breaks my heart because I liked Tamina and, and Naya. So I'm like, I mean, I liked them. We saw Naya attack Tamina, which was, I know, which are, I'm like, I'm like, I kind of hope Tamina whoops that ass. I'd be okay with Tamina getting some shine, you know? Yep, but there's, I agree with you, it's going to be a multi women match. And if it doesn't happen at WrestleMania, it's going to happen next Friday on SmackDown. Yeah, maybe. Or, yeah. No, I think it's going to happen at Mania because they're all about trying to get as many people on the show as possible, which I'm okay with because these are all actu actually tag teams are, tr are trying to invest in since the unfortunate breakup of the Iconics, which leads me to, do you think, since the Riot Squad is involved in this, that maybe somehow Billy Kay, they might revisit that storyline and she may play a part in either hindering them or helping them or helping someone? I think she might team up with Carmella. I would not be I would not be upset about that. Or if they just could you, okay. Fan fiction scenario. Ooh. Would, you, would you not? Shania Payne bulldozes through everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Lana Dayglo, Bad and Bitchin, Blonde and Bitchin, Guns N' Roses, whatever, Riot Squad. They've won the match. And then you hear, oh, oh, oh and it's just that. Uh, Iconics back together, coming out. Oh, I'd be all for it, please. I would please, be. Please I would be okay. That. I would be okay with that. I would mark out so hard, you know, like okay, put them back together. That's what the fans want. Because they they didn't need to be split up. It was a. And team then they win. Was... How great would that be? Then they win. Yes, I'll take <laughs> care of the WrestleMania love story. Give it to me. Um, I would like that almost as much as I liked this main event of SmackDown, which was a street fight between Daniel Bryan and Jey Uso. Well, how could you go wrong with Daniel Bryan and Jey Uso? Jey Uso's, my God, he, he does deserve like an award for like most improved. Like. Oh yeah. Um, or cause I mean, he's never been bad, but like. But as a solo competitor, like flying on his own. Yeah. Oh, so good. Sure. Because he was and always I, previously flying with his brother. But he, uh -huh. And I just really hope that Jimmy can come in when he comes back, can do the same, you know? I hope so. But this match, though, it's the storyline for Daniel Bryan and him being this ultimate underdog against the likes of Edge and Roman Reigns is exactly how they needed to put him back into it. Because when you make Daniel Bryan an underdog, he is the best Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, because we never think about it. When Daniel Bryan was the champion, aside from his eco-friendly Daniel Bryan, there was never really a full-on love of what he was doing. But when he yeah. was chasing, he's such a good title chaser. That's that's also why you'll see heels tend to, for you wrestling fans out there, that's why heels tend to hold the belts longer. Because fans are into the chase. They are into... <clears throat> the underdog or the baby face going after the belt and trying to beat the bad guy. And that's why so many baby faces when they're on top for too long tend to start getting booed. People get bored. You don't, you, it's not fun if the good guy's always winning. The good guy needs to win the big battle when it matters most. That's why you'll see like Batman gets his ass kicked a little bit. Superman mm -hmm. looks like he's going to die. You know, you got to storytelling peaks and valleys guys, peaks and valleys. Oh, of course. I mean, it works in every form of storytelling, but Daniel Bryan is when he got Roman Reigns on the ramp after the match had ended and cinched in that yes slot. Yes. Literally, yes. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Uh, do we think he... I mean, I like how it's like perfect booking would be Edge winning. Like, oh, he came back from injury. Yay. I don't think so anymore. Neither do I, because the way that Daniel's been built up, I'm kind of like, you know, with this being his last year, mm -hmm. I could see Daniel winning it and then going on to drop the belt to Edge. At like SummerSlam? Yeah. 
you know, because you need a marquee match. And and versus Daniel Bryan, there's a match. I mean, yeah. the only thing I'm hoping is it does. The thing about what they're doing is I don't think they'd take Roman Reigns out of the title picture for that long. I just don't believe they would. Yeah. I mean, which if this were the Attitude Era, Roman would be circling along with three other guys who've been built up. Yeah. You know. But we don't circle anymore. We just... I know. I know. It's so unfortunate. So unfortunate. And a, NXT circles. NXT circles a lot. I, I, I don't mind that their roster circles around me like I'm a girl in a Brazers video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> NXT is the hottest roster. I, I'm sorry. Just like... Yeah. Uh, hold on. <laughs> yes. All right. So on that note, um, I think I already know the answer to this. Your top show of the week, Tommy. Oh, NXT. Yes, I will say same here. Close second for AEW this week. Um, so top moment for you of this week. Did I dry off? <laughs> um, honestly, probably. I want to say the pull apart between Raquel and EO. Followed mm -hmm. closely by Arcade Anarchy. Um, my moment is just going to be a moment. It is going to be Sue pulling up in the middle of Arcade Anarchy and dropping off Trent. That was a moment of the that week. That is fucking brilliant. That is, <clears throat> I am here for cameos like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. And it's not overkill. She's not there like a character that's actually a part of the storyline. She just pops up. And that's how you do a cameo right. You don't have them pop up for three weeks at a time. Exactly. Ugh. I'd buy her action figure. <laughs> I would buy a Sue mini. No, a Sue with what? Cassidy, Trent, and Chuck in the back pop vinyl set. <laughs> just, just, or just Sue with a, a a minivan that you can destroy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And on the part of destroying, what was your lowest part of the week? Who was the bottom? Oh, just. I have to really think. Hold on. Can I give you mine? Because it might just be the one you agree with. Go ahead. Shane McMahon's report card segment was the You know what? It was so bad that I forgot about it. That's how bad. I just blocked it from memory. I'll go with something different. I'll just go with, like, just, just, like, ah, uh, just their decisions lately, mostly on Raw. It's mostly a Raw problem. I don't. Unless you count SmackDown, the only negative thing I can think about is the buildup they're giving Sasha and Bianca. And that's not even Bianca's fault. It's completely how Sasha is playing that character. You know, um, I don't think they're her actually decision, writing her very well either. Well, uh, well, she could she could have she can play that character differently. She can rework that promo to say what the writers wrote, but to play it differently. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Her, her, her doing a Carmella voice, I literally would just have preferred Sasha doing her regular voice. It that didn't need to be the diva voice, you know? Um, the report card was bad, but I just think... I'm going to say the implosion of the Hurt business, because if it doesn't have a payoff, like new members coming in, or... It did, Baron Corbin. Or... Cedric and Shelton basically using that loophole to help Lashley retain at Mania, mm -hmm. then I, what was the fucking point? You know what I'm saying? Like oh, that. No, I 100 know what you're saying. Yeah. So I would be okay with them bringing in Keith Lee and Ricochet into the Hurt business, two people who are in dire need of a good talker and yeah. a revamp, you know? I hope for that too. Well, I hope for a lot of things because. WrestleMania is next week, and I don't know if I'm really excited for it. Excited for TakeOver. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know how amped I am for Mania, and that's not necessarily a good thing. That's just the quite opposite of the good thing. That's a bad thing. That's not good at all. In year in a row, they've tried to hold it in Florida. Last year, we had COVID. This year, we got, what, like the toxic spill? What's going on over there right now? Like, 
the water over there is all like polluted now. It's like, give it up. <laughs> Stop trying to make Florida happen, WWE. It's, it's never not going to happen. happen. <laughs> well, Tommy, where can people find you all across the social medias? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter at rare underscore forum, R A W R underscore forum. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore man underscore diva. You can find me on Facebook at officially perfect, uh, www.facebook.com backslash officially perfect, P-U-R-R effect. And if you would like to purchase any merchandise, storefrontier.com backslash merchandise, P-U-R-R chin dice. And uh, if you're going to leave a comment, leave a nice one. We're human beings. Uh, we have feelings. I have one left. And my mom reads these comments. So um, oh, that's cute. Yeah, just don't. <laughs> I know I'm 35. Like, don't upset my mom. No. <laughs> well, you can find me at Joey underscore Mayberry on Instagram and Twitter. Joey dot Mayberry on TikTok. Also, check out Ring the Bell. It's another channel on the YouTubes. And I talk about wrestling there every single Saturday. And guys, guess what? If you liked us talking, please subscribe to this channel. Also, like this video. If you dislike it, I'll come find you and your family. And also, remember... <laughs> <laughs> those eyes, those eyes. Also, wow, is, right the viewer is okay. <laughs> That's one way to get us paid. Yes, it is. If you like this, please support us. There is a um, GoFundUs function on Ang GoFundUs function on Anchor that you can check out. Also, check out our both of our merchandise stores. We love you guys. Thank you for watching. Whoever you are, we appreciate it, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. That was a long outro. I'm so, so sorry. I'm working on getting better. At We're still under an hour.